and there we are. It's uh, the great state of Zimbabwe, southeastern corner of this beautiful green granite country. We are 40 kilometers from the closest town of Masungo. We are sitting and standing on this beautiful granite platform. Now, no doubt, this is granite bedrock. It is weathered, of course, being exposed to the elements, rain, sun, humidity, and wind. However, just a little bit below this darker surface, we can see granite, which is medium coarse, with little black and white pieces, granite. Obviously, this is a natural setting. But behind me, we can see granite boulder. It's roughly oblong. It's almost rounded. One, two, three, four, five. We have a couple of more pieces of different geometry. But what really catches our attention is this pedestal which doesn't look so significant. This is probably the most interesting thing here. You have the pedestal and then you have this granite rock sitting on top of it. How did it get here? Of course, we have a hill above us. It's all granite. Wherever we can see, granite, granite, granite. Now, of course, there are possibility that pieces started rolling down. But would they end up exactly on the top of this pedestal and that pedestal and that pedestal and that pedestal? Of course not. So, no doubt, this is natural material. But it's been placed here. Of course, people thousands of years back, even hundreds of years back, did not have technology to transport, lift, and place it here. If you go to the times of Bushmen, just a few hundred years back, no tools, no equipment, no cranes. The boulder over there has rough dimensions of 6 by 4 by 3. 6 times 4, 24, times 3, 72. The specific weight about 3, 72 by 3, about 220 tons. 220 tons. Let me remind you that until the end of the last century, 20th century, our biggest cranes had capacity of 250 tons. 10 years ago, China, 1,000 tons. Today, about 2,000 tons. But those cranes are fixed. They don't move because they are so heavy. If they start to move on the road, the road would break. So, 220 tons. This baby here, roughly 4 by 3 by 2. 4 times 3, 12 by 2. 24 times 3, about 65 to 70 tons. So we are in presence of the civilization that was able to move tens and hundreds of tons. Why would they do that? Well, we know from the recent times that the elders, the Bushman elders, would come here, they would gather, make decisions, Probably during the special days, they would hold ceremonies, they would dance, they would play, they would sing, they would mourn those who are gone. They would probably try to talk to their ancestors, the souls of their ancestors, trying to get some knowledge, trying to make some decisions. And this is all fine. But this has already been there for a much longer period of time. This is what we can call a balancing rock. Balancing rock, you have support only on two, three, four little spots. 
So the ancients were showing us their skills. Now, we are aware that similar rocks are in South Africa, in United States, in different states, in Norway. Just recently, as the iceberg started melting down in Norway, because we have unusually high temperatures during the winter times, some of those balancing rocks have been exposed. Before, for hundreds of years, it was ice. So now we can see that there was a civilization who was playing with these rocks. And finally, for what reason? Well, all we can say, granite, a big content of quartz crystal, when you have a huge tonnage pressing the granite bedrock, it should transform the energy from mechanical to electrical. But then you need more elements, water or tunnels or some type of technology to make this work. So without that, what we have, we have very soft, very subtle energy which also can be felt, even though they don't teach us to develop our spiritual senses. Once we close our eyes and relax, open our hands, we can feel the tingling in our fingers. We can feel the movement of the energy. Of course, that was not the primarily purpose, but this is what we can feel today. So we are at the place of forgotten technology, the age before our time, the builders that we know nothing about, or how they did it. So, it raises questions, and even though we cannot get all the answers, we are in presence of something that does not fit our traditional view of history. Thank you.
Zimbabwe, southeastern part, near the town of Masingo. Now, a beautiful rock formation is here. It's a granite. What I have behind me, on top of that hill, are three granite rocks. The first one, to my left, is elongated. And it is sitting on the most narrow part. This is not what you would expect if it was rolling down from the top of the hill. The second one, the most massive, and the third, the smallest one, roughly rounded, which was obviously placed there. In between, we see the gap. It's like passageway. Let me take the compass and try to figure out the orientation of that passageway. It's clear to me that the orientation is east, northeast. Now, having in mind that we are in southern hemisphere, is the same thing if we were at the north, but it would be showing east, southeast. What does that mean? That is the sunrise during the summer solstice. In the northern hemisphere, June 21st, here in the south, half a year later. So if you are standing on that line, you can see the sunlight coming. Now, it makes one wonder, why would somebody place those three huge granite boulders in such a way to receive the sunlight during the summer solstice. Of course it is the most important day for the ancients, but why would they go through so much trouble? Today we can hear from both independent and conventional researchers that they had a message for us. I don't think so. We are just one of the future civilizations that comes to the surface of this planet. They were doing that for themselves. They did have certain practical use. So, we can see the astronomical features all around us. And if we go a little bit down, we can see the rounded granite boulders, a balancing rock sitting at the edge of the granite surface. How many such granite installations around us in Zimbabwe. Dozens, hundreds. Somebody was playing with the multi-tonnage, like with what we play today with the much smaller pieces. They had abilities, they had the knowledge, they were looking at the sky. <laughs> Dear friends, I am Dr. Sam Osmanagic. I am um, greeting you from the heart of Bosnia-Herzegovina, from our beautiful Park Ravne II. Behind me is the green crystal pyramid that we built recently. Coming to this park is free of charge. We don't charge entrance fee. Parking is for free. All the installations are for free. We recently made a beautiful hiking trail, spent a lot of money, and we have given it for free to the public. We show that there are different concepts. It's not always about the money. In our case, it is about the humanity. I ask you to give us a little support. Subscribe to our YouTube TV channel. It is for free also. And you're gonna have a content which we update and refresh every few days. 
new documentaries, new movies, news from the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. Thank you very much and I hope to see you here soon.